Hi guys, Mr. Rice here. Um, so it's March uh, and Coder Z is having a special Coder Z League uh, sprint challenge for this month. Uh, so let's look at some of the Coder League, Coder Z League Junior missions uh, from this sprint challenge, huh? And we'll do some of the missions from Farm Fever together. So let's do the first one together called Back and Forth. Hopefully this will give you some ideas as you're coding through uh, these early missions before you get to the final challenge in Farm Fever. This is a good way for you to collect some points as well. Okay. Welcome to Farm Fever. Collect the maximum number of points and reach the target. Collect fruit, avoid lightning, all right? Okay, so it looks like the first one is pretty much done here for you, uh, except for if we run it, watch what happens. Looks like the robot moves forward for two seconds, uh, which isn't far enough, and then it doesn't do anything. So we know we need to change the distance uh, that it moves forward. So let's change this to 2,500 milliseconds. Uh, and then the robot needs to go backwards. Uh, and it gives you a drive block already. So let's change the direction to backward. Give it a power of 100. Or alternatively, you could give it a power of 100, negative 100 direction forward. But I think this will work just fine. All right, so the robot should drive forward for 2.5 seconds and then move backward into the target, collecting all the fruit, giving us all the points. Not too shabby. Let's try the next mission, shall we? Okay, the next mission is called a turning point. Now we need to collect the fruit here. Uh, don't go too far though, because there's a uh, red lightning bolt thing here. That looks bad. Turn right into the target. And the code is basically already written for you, but obviously we'll need to change some things. So let's think about what the code will do here. Looks like the robot will drive forward for three seconds, turn to the right for 1750 se milliseconds, so 1.75 seconds, and then drive forward. So let's see what happens here. All right, the robot drives forward for three seconds, which is not far enough. And then it obviously doesn't work. Okay, so we know it doesn't drive forward for far enough. Let's change this to 4,000 milliseconds. See how the robot does. That looks much better, doesn't it? And then a right turn, not a perfect 90 degree right turn, but good enough. Turning a uh, 90 degree right turn like this uh, works fairly well most of the time. But uh, if we want to get perfect 90 degree turns, we'll probably have to use the gyro sensor. Uh, but it was good enough for this mission. So let's move to the next mission. This looks like a left turn curving slightly into the target. So the code block's already given here for you as well. Power of 100, steering of 100. Now, if you run this code, your robot is going to spin in place, which is not great. Uh, it's spinning to the right in place as well, and we want it actually to curve turn to the left. So let's reset the simulation here. Now, a left turn is a negative number. We know that much. We don't know the actual curve value for the steering that we need. All we know is it needs to be a negative number, so it curves to the left. I'm going to try negative 10. Let's try a steering of negative 10, see what happens. My robot, it started okay, but then it did too sharp of a turn. So if you're turning too sharply, you need to lower your steering value. So let's try negative five. And negative five looks perfect, excellent. So the only thing you need to change in this mission is the steering value. Okay. This one's called wait your turn. 
Okay, what do we have here? It looks like we need to make the robot turn. So the robot's right here, it needs to turn. We don't know how much degrees it needs to turn, but it needs to turn there. And then it needs to turn here as well. Oh, look at that. There's a comment written for us. It's a turn of 120 degrees to the right. Uh, okay, so let's put a power of 15 and a steering of 100, because I know it's to the right. Now, notice we have a wait until block here as well. Uh, it wants us to use a sensor. Now, to make a degrees turn, you actually have a sensor that measures degrees called the gyro. So let's get gyro angle. Oops. Now, notice your gyro angle does not fit in there because we also need a math block. So, where is my math block? Oh, that's weird. I don't know why it gives you that block when the one you really need is in control flow. Yeah, see the, the gyro block you actually need is not found in the sensors block or in this gadgets block. So go into control flow and grab your wait until get gyro angle less than 190 block right there. You can just get rid of that block they give you. They're confusing you with that block. Okay, so we need the robot to turn 120 degrees. So it's a matter as simple as just turning 90 into 120, right? Well, and that didn't work. You notice the robot keeps spinning around and around and around. Now, why do you think that is? So let's open our little HUD heads up display here and see what's happening with the gyro. Let's reset the program here. Zoom in a little. Nope, not that this way. Okay. So let's reset simulation. Make sure that HUD is open. Gyroscope. Uh, and let's stop the robot once it gets to 120 degrees. Okay. Now, notice what my robot does. It doesn't do anything. It like automatically goes to the stop block. Why is that? And that's because your inequality symbol here is a less than. So it says get driver angle less than 120 and then stop. It's already less than 120, right? It's zero already. So change your inequality to greater than or even better, let's try greater than equal to. Now let's try. Now the robot should turn 120 degrees and then stop to the right. That's pretty good. Now, I know it says the degrees are 120, uh, but that looks like it turned a little too much. You know what? Let's try moving forward anyway. So let's change the zero to a 100. Now let's see how far off. We might need to adjust this 120 number. So once it gets to 120, it should go straight forward. And notice how far off it really is. It turned too much, even though we said stop at 120 degrees. So let's try lowering this to 115. Okay. Look at that, even 115 seems like it's too much. So let's try 110. Mm, 110 looks perfect, doesn't it? Follows that line almost exactly. Okay, now we need to figure out exactly how long to do that turn for. So we want the robot to go exactly right here. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You could use a motor encoder and say that the uh, motors need to go, what, six, that's a little hard to read, 6,396 degrees. Or you could do a wait for milliseconds. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Figure out how many seconds it took to get down here. I think it was about 10 seconds. Let's try that. Oh, and then we need to stop the motors. Let's try that. Let's run the code here. 
see if my turn on my gyro sensor is still good. Notice it's a little more off than it was last time too, but pretty good, except for 10 seconds was too long. Let's do 8,000 seconds. Set simulation. Now I'm going to look at my encoder here and see exactly where to stop it. The encoder is not perfect because, uh, well, I guess we could use it. Not going to on this mission. 8,000 milliseconds was not quite enough. We'll bump it up to 8,500. I'm actually going to lower my power on my steering, my turn left, right as well, uh, because it keeps getting more and more off for some reason. Let's run it. Notice it turns slower, but that should make my gyro sensor more accurate. Yeah, and that looks a lot better, doesn't it? Okay, 8,500 milliseconds stops me right there, which is perfect. Okay, so now we need to reset the gyro and we're going to do another turn but this time we're going to turn to the left so i'm just going to duplicate the turning block this time change the steering to negative 100. now the question is how much on the gyro angle do we want so if a right turn means the gyro angle we needed greater than or equal to 110 degrees. This time we probably need 110, negative 110 degrees. So obviously you'll need to change the inequality to less than or equal to. Because since it's going down, your number you want is gonna be less than or equal to negative 110. So we're keeping the number the same, just flipping the sign from positive to negative because it's a left turn. And that means we need to flip the inequality as well. Okay, so there are my robot turns to the right. Go straight forward, following the line pretty good. Since I slowed the turn down, it's actually a little less than it was before, isn't it? But still gets all the little fruits. Resets the gyro, does a left turn. But it didn't stop. Oh, because I forgot to code the next block. <laughs> uh, then we need to drive forward. Try it one more time. I didn't tell the robot what to do after the left-hand gyro. Oh, you can see how far off it got this time. I might not even get that last fruit. Oh, it just barely got it. Now to turn left 110 degrees, follow it to the end. Boom, there you go. This is how you can solve this mission using gyro sensors. Not required, but it is helpful. Okay. So that'll help you solve the first few missions in Farm Fever. Uh, looks like the first one, two, three, and four missions. Uh, after this, we'll start looking at the future missions, which use other sensors as well. Gyro sensor is a complicated one, so hopefully this helps you. Uh, good luck and stay tuned for future Farm Video, Farm Fever videos as well. Bye, guys.